Classic rock photographer Christian Treber talks about Jimi Hendrix and his death. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Well, this past weekend, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of that classic outdoor concert, the one and the only Woodstock from August of 1969. I was nine years old at the time, and even though I was 10 hours away, and if I would have been a teenager, maybe I would have tried to go, but you don't know what you don't know, and yes, I was nine years old. But this past weekend, you ever notice there were a lot of tributes? We saw uh, Where Are They Now and, uh, and the classic artists that we have lost since then, and there have been many. Richie Havens and Jimi Hendrix were probably my two favorite performers of that weekend. I've seen so much footage. But, you know, starting off that show with Richie up there just with his guitar and half his, I think his bass player wasn't there. Some of the people were on stage with him, but it's amazing the energy he had. And he was really scared, he had said, to go up there. But again, it was another excuse for me to think about Jimi Hendrix. And I just talked to Christian Treber, who spent an awful long time with The Who and got to know Keith Moon really, really well, as well as that ill-fated band, Badfinger, who you remember were signed to the Apple Music label. Three of the four of them are dead. They were screwed by management. It was an awful story, which we'll get into in a future video with Christian. He got to know the guys in the band incredibly well. He's got a lot of inside information. He was at the concert for Bangladesh, that famous George Harrison concert from 1971. I think it was August 1971. He took a lot of pictures from that and has a lot of stories to share. But in this clip, we talk about Jimi Hendrix and his death. Also, a lot of people aren't aware that Jimi Hendrix, towards the end of his career, was actually moving towards jazz. That's what he wanted to play. And he'd actually recorded tracks with Miles Davis and a number of other musicians. I've been told, and I don't know whether it's true or not, I've never had it verified, but I've been told, and I heard some tracks with Miles, but that, that uh, Marshall Chess, who got, over the, got a hold of all the recordings and stuff for a period of time before the estate took them back, had erased the tracks with Miles, just kept Jimmy's vocals and guitar, and then added other musicians to it and released the album. Really? Which, if it was done, to me, would be like defacing the Mona Lisa. Wow. No, I've never heard that, but I did hear he was, he was getting into jazz. He was a great guy. I mean, there's no other way to tell it. I mean, I was with him in a cab going down down to Electric Ladyland, and we stopped in front of, I think it was called Lowe's State Theater at the time, and it was what I call the spasm band, meaning a washtub bass and acoustic guitar and a bunch of up, uh, overturned trash cans and stuff to be played like drums and so forth. And Hendrix stopped the cab, got out, listened to him for a while, got another cab stopped, asked him to all get in the back of the cab, took him down to Electric Lady Lane and jay jammed with him to about 3 o'clock in the morning. I mean, that's the type he was. He really enjoyed jamming. He really enjoyed people. Yeah. Very quiet, very shy. Yeah, very shy and very modest. I find it hard to believe that a man like him was modest, you know, and that's amazing. I don't think he ever realized how great he was or understood why people thought he was so great, other than maybe the fact that he played a, what he called, screwed up guitar, using a little bit different language, because of the fact he was playing it upside down, because he was left-handed. Other than that, I don't think he really saw what he was or what he was capable of doing. Were you surprised when he died? I am only surprised by the fact that so many people still think he died of an overdose, that it was self-intaken, and it wasn't the case at all. From what I understood was that he was always taking, and when I talked to him at Ronnie Scott's, he was jamming with Charlie Mingus, and he had said that he was off all drugs, the, best, the strongest drug he was taking was caffeine and coffee and tea, but that every night before he went to bed, because he got so jammed up or was so excited about playing music again, because he said he lost the love of music because he was forced to feel like a puppet on a string, telling him what to play, set the guitar on fire, do this, do that, he tried to go into jazz. They kept on saying, no, that's not commercially saleable, just like the band of Gypsies. They didn't like what he was doing. And he basically said he was thinking about quitting the industry, going back to the States, relaxing, living on the money he had, and going out and jamming again and trying to get back the feel of it, which he felt he'd lost. He said the joy of music had been taken away from him. So what, what did I he die of? What, how did he die? Well, he was taking the sleeping pills, and he ran out. And his girlfriend from Germany, who I understand, had sleeping pills, but they were five times the strength. 
and he normally swallowed three, four pills. He took three, four pills of hers, which was technically 15 times, if you know what I'm saying, because his strength was so much stronger, and he basically vomited in his sleep, and he basically suffocated. Yeah. There are links in the description of this page where you can get and buy prints from Christian Treber. Some of the stories he tells and talk about behind the scenes stuff. Sometimes when you get someone who was not quite in the band, but associated with the band, you'll get really juicy stories. And man, he's got a lot of those. And what a nice guy to talk to. And he's on, he's, I think, in the process now of trying to move back to New York City, where he found there was a lot of action and probably still is. Make sure you comment on our video, subscribe to our channel and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. Mm-hmm. <laughs>